Hello, I'm Lawrence. I'm Tara. And we're on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to words. It always pertains to words when I'm in the video, at least. And reading around in social media and forums over the years, I've come to find that there are some word differences that are just more well known than others. Sometimes when we're talking about words, I sometimes forget which one is British and American now because we've been together so long. But I thought it would be a fun idea to stand here with my American wife and talk about some of the more obscure word differences that we encounter sometimes. So these ones I might actually know the difference between. <laughs> my brain hasn't completely fogged them out yet. So throughout this video you're going to see us looking at pictures and moving pictures of objects and we're going to just say what we think it's called in our own language. So for example here's a picture of a lorry. Or a truck. Now that was an example of one that wasn't so obscure just to whet your appetite for what's about to come. And and as ever, if you're new to this channel and haven't had a chance to subscribe... DO THAT NOW! I was gonna say that. And of course the same is true for your channel, which is... Old Fashioned AF. Although I don't really ever make videos on there, but I will at some point in the future. I can at least promise you that. I have trust in you, wife. Thanks. So in a moment we're gonna compare some words. But before all that, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Living the life of a YouTube sensation doesn't just mean starring in your own videos. Once the makeup comes off and the cameras stop rolling, I become a consumer just like you. And this has been made all the better by YouTube Premium. I've been using Premium for several years now and in addition to an ad-free experience, I can listen to all of my favourite albums on YouTube Music at no additional cost. And if you like what I do on Lost in the Pond, there's more good news! No, I was talking at a normal volume. By subscribing to YouTube Premium, part of your fee directly helps to support content creators like me. To help facilitate this, I've teamed up with YouTube to offer users a one month free trial. If you're eligible, click the link in my description to begin your own premium experience. And to help out America's finest British import. Not my words, those are the words of the Quincy Gazette. If you subscribe through the link in this post, I may get a commission. Alright, so you can see somebody who will remain anonymous because it's stock footage pulling off painter's tape from the wall, but it's not the painter's tape that we're talking about, wife. It's that thing immediately below it that's attached to the wall. The baseboard? The base. You call it a baseboard, which I can understand. It is at the base of the wall. We call it a skirting board, which, you know, you're into fashion. It's like a skirt around the wall. It doesn't really give room for the wall to have feet like you would as a human, but what do you think? Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Although baseboard is easier to say. Fewer syllables. All right, here's a bunch of presumably students sitting on some raked seating. But what do you call that kind of thing that you have at sort of a sports ground at a university or a school? Bleachers. Bleachers, yeah. I think it was the philosopher Taylor Swift who introduced me to that term. Not literally, I just heard the song. But in Britain, we don't typically have these things in our school so I'm not sure what I'd call it other than a stand. What's that? An exclamation point! I see what you did there, you exclaimed it. it yes, exclamation point is what you call it. Exclamation mark for me. So this person is sitting behind a desk in a hotel. What is the area of the hotel that she is sitting in and working at? The front desk. So you call that front desk? Yeah. yeah. I call it reception. I think the whole room is the reception. And I think the area, the very specific area within that room that she's sitting is reception that I would go up to and ask for, you know, clean blankets. But then what's the rest of the room called? <laughs> Sons of no. I hope you don't mind, but I actually went downstairs and got something from the kitchen to talk about. Uh, one of the biggest things in our kitchen outside of the fridge and the oven and the sink and the microwave and actually it's not that big. But what would you call this? A bread box. Interesting, because we've got a very similar name for it in the UK. I would refer to this as a bread bin. We like to use the word bin where you don't, just for many things, right? Yeah, I guess so. Like trash can bin. So this person has a really big tool in their hands, and that's not an innuendo. I'm not sure either one of us has ever operated one of these things, but if you were to see me plunging one of these into the ground, what would you call it? A jackhammer? A jackhammer. You like the name Jack in this country. It shows up in everything. Well, yeah. Pepper Jack cheese. Jack is a nickname for John. We once again have a bit of a mouthful for this term. It's called a pneumatic drill. I think the P is silent. P is silent. All right, in the past I have talked about bedroom differences between Britain and America, but one thing that I forgot to mention is the area at the side of the bed where you store things at night. What do you call that? A side table, bed stand, I don't know, what do you call it? 
Neither of those things. Do you ever call it a nightstand? Yeah. We don't really call it that in the UK. I've always referred to this as a bedside table. You think that's weird, don't you? Because it's not really a table as such. It can be used as a table. Great. Now this fella in blue is holding something in his hand, which I'm sure he wouldn't do anything nasty with, but it's there just for extra protection, I think, within the police force. And it is known in my country as a truncheon. What do you call it? Uh, a baton, but I don't think the police really have those anymore in the US. No, they don't. And you're, you, you, you're just so obsessed with French things that you call it a baton, but I think a lot of Americans would call it a nightstick, wouldn't they? Maybe? I, I have no they, idea. They do, because I saw Big Boss Man vs. Nails at Survivor Series 92 in a nightstick on a pole match. That's very specific. What do you call that? So that's scotch tape. Right, for us it's sellotape, and this is an interesting one because this is a case of two different brand names becoming genericized in each of our countries. Mm. All right, we've all been in an Italian restaurant and the waiter or waitress comes around and does that with some cheese into your pizza and you're very happy, but we in Britain and America have different ways of describing the end result of that. Mm. What do you call it? Shredded cheese? Shredded, it sounds like cereal. I call it grated cheese because that's what it is. Some of it isn't grated though. Some of it like just comes in a bag already pre-shredded. Grated. Oh, you're at a fairground or a theme park and your niece says to you, I've got a good idea. Do you want to go on those things that bump into each other and give you a massive migraine afterward? What do you call these cars that collide like that? They're called bumper cars. Yep, not for me. So this was something we discovered the other day, isn't yeah. it? You'd never heard of the term dodgems. No. That's what we call it in the UK. These are dodgems. That's funny because I feel like the whole idea is to bump into people, not to dodge. Them. No, no, no. The, the idea is to dodge the notion of going on them in the first place. What is this monstrosity? A pickle? A pickle. It's not a pickle. Yes, it is. It's a gherkin. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have come to know gherkin as well as that building in London that's supposedly shaped like a gherkin. Thankfully, from experience, it doesn't taste like one. You know, seeing one of these makes me think that I should have toasted this on the oven. If I were to do that though, what on earth do you call this flamey thing that you find atop your cooker? A gas burner. Gas burner, that makes total sense because it burns gas. But in Britain, we refer to this as a hob, which is a word that we use quite commonly in the biscuit, hobnob, which also contains the word knob, which can mean something that I can't repeat. All right, this will bring back memories of when we went to see Manchester United in Michigan a few years ago. The crowd, as is common at football matches, are doing that spontaneous thing where they stand up and you've got to stand up and be a part of it as it goes around the stadium. What do you call it? The wave. The wave. We have a more specific name for it in the UK and that is the Mexican wave. And there's a good reason for this. We first became aware of this phenomenon during the 1986 Mexican World Cup. And we just named it that thereafter. Hey wife, you like board games, don't you? Yeah. Ever played this one with me? I don't remember. I don't think so, but I used to play it a lot when I was a historic interpreter. The important thing is, when you did that, what did you call it? Well, it's called tic-tac-toe. Mm. To us, this is noughts and crosses, because there are noughts, as in a zero, and crosses. Although they're really O's and X's, aren't they? Yeah. None of them look like a tic-tac. Or a toe. Oh, glad I brought some of this with me. <laughs> because this is our next entry. What would you call this? Paper towel. Paper towel. And, you know, I think that makes more sense to me because you often find these around the house, not just in the location that I'm about to reference, which is the kitchen. In Britain, we refer to this as kitchen roll. Well, I mean, I think it's mostly in kitchens, right? All right, you're driving along the road and you see some people in orange gear doing some work on the road specifically. What would you just generally refer to that as, as you're driving past it? Uh, construction work. Whereas us, we get very specific with this one. We refer to that as road works. I don't know that we do that with any other type of construction, but we do do it with road works. As you know, wife, I'm a little bit of a music extraordinaire, play multiple instruments, and one of those is the guitar. And when I first moved to the United States, I asked your brother, who's even better at guitar, to lend me a plectrum. Now he knew what it meant, but a lot of times people in America have no idea what a plectrum is. What is a plectrum to you? I'll be right back. Where are you going? It's this. It's a guitar pick. Thought I was in charge of the props. Oh, look at these cool cats sitting in a wood and having the absolute time of their life. But it's not them that I'm interested in. It's the vehicle behind them. It's a camper van. Is it? 
Are you sure of that? Well, it's not an actual van because it looks like that's the kind that they tow, but yeah, a camper. In either case, in Britain, we would refer to this as a caravan, which a caravan, I think, has a different connotation here, doesn't it? Like a caravan of people moving across the country. Well, a caravan of carts or of wagons. Now, while Brits and Americans sometimes disagree on what to call this entire fixture, it's actually the middle light that I'm most interested in. In the UK, we refer to this as an amber light. Wife, what you got? Yellow. It's a yellow light. Yellow lights both do the job. And finally, we're going to close up here with something that literally closes up. In the UK, if I ever had a jacket that needed closing through these means, I would refer to that physical thing as a zip. What do you call it? A zipper. And I've just realized that the reason you don't is probably because you get confused with the term zip code. No, zip is the action. It's the verb. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for this video. I think both of us learned a few things today. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then you can punch the subscribe button. No, we, we don't use the word punch. That's way too violent. Just click it and my bell. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter and threads. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. And finally, should we do a shout out to my ponderers? Yeah. Yeah, because you make my videos possible. And if you would like to become a ponderer and gain access to my secret video series, Diary of a YouTube Sensation, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond or by clicking the join button below. And as we said at the start of the video, this is not the first time that we've compared words. If you would like to see more of that kind of action, click this video next. Until the next video, goodbye.